Hi guys, welcome to The Gun Shot with me, John. Today, we're gonna to be discussing the 16 ball. So the history of the 16 ball dates back a very, very long way. The 16 ball's ball diameter is 0.662 of an inch, or nearly two thirds of an inch. As such, 16 ball could be related all the way back to 66 caliber rifles, certainly 16 ball muzzle loading shotguns, and has been around pretty much ever since. It did fall in popularity back in the 20s, all the way up and through today, it's been on a fairly steady decline, with occasional spikes of happiness where people kind of realize that if you can own a gun that shoots exactly like a 12 bore, but isn't called a 12 bore, so you can be in a niche without being in a niche whatsoever in performance. So 16 bore obviously came around because if you take one pound of lead, you chop it in half, you chop it in half, you chop it in half and chop it in half again, you end up with 16 individual spheres of one ounce. Obviously the subdivision of pounds is ounces and as such, there's some historical logic there. So in muzzle loaders, a one ounce ball or a one ounce load of shot was about the optimum load, in fact, the 16 and the 28 performed what was called a square load. Essentially, a square load is when you have equal parts of shot, wad, and powder in there, and that will give you the most optimum patterns. This can also be changed to change your patterns and so on and so forth. That's why the 16 was very popular back then, is because it was much more logical and perhaps less prone to mistakes than loading anything else. Obviously nowadays with breech loading guns, the whole 16 ball square load thing is completely defunct. However, something to talk about around the coffee table when somebody goes, oh, is that a 16? Let's start with 16 bore positives. A 16 bore weighs generally 10 to 15% less than a 12 bore equivalent gun. Obviously it falls somewhere between action size of a 12 and a 20 and actually that lends itself to a really sleek action while still being sizable enough to look manly. Ballisticians will also say that a one ounce load of shot in a 16 ball is the near perfect shot column to width ratio to produce almost perfect patterns. However, patterns are so subjective that you can almost throw that one out the window. Ballistically, within the factory available loads for a 16 ball, you're also at zero disadvantage over a 12 ball in terms of killing power. Unfortunately, and we're gonna lead into our downsides now, loads are really hard to find. So unless you home load, you can really struggle if you don't want 25 to 28 grams. Also, unless you home load, you'll struggle to find anything that isn't a seven, a six, or a five in shot size and a fiber wad. If you do home load, I know people who load up 18 gram loads for going and shooting clays without putting too much wear on old English guns, and those who load all the way up to 34 gram loads, which is wild. Putting an ounce in a 12, being that 10% heavier, also reduces the recoil. So a 16 bore will have more felt recoil than a 12. On the flip side of that though, is that if you put an ounce in a 20 bore, of a lesser weight again, that would kick more. So there is that beautiful middle ground that a 16 ball sits in. One of the other reasons for the demise of 16 ball is the surging growth of the 20 ball. You can now go and get a 34 gram, two and three quarter inch 20 ball load that will outperform the 16 ball in terms of shooting high pheasants. You can go all the way down to a 21 gram. Every shop will have an array of cartridges and the manufacturers of cartridges have really invested their time in developing those, obviously because of the popularity of the guns. So in reality, it kind of has left the 16 ball lying a bit low. As we've said, 16 ball really isn't that popular nowadays, although it does have little spikes of resurgence. The factors for this are fairly widespread. A lack of availability in cartridges, a penchant recently for high pheasant shooting, and as such, the need for a heavier, denser load, 32 gram, 34 gram fours and things like that, that just aren't available for a 16. A lack of availability of affordable modern guns. I think probably the most affordable one would be something like a Lincoln or a Rizzini, but in the end of the day, if you're gonna spend a thousand pounds on a gun, most people aren't, aren't gonna wanna take the niche road. The other downside is the lack of availability of modern sporting guns in a 16 bore. Yes, you can buy a Belgian Browning. Yes, perhaps you can buy a 16 bore semi-automatic when somebody just decides to produce a limited run. The cheapest one would be something like a Lincoln or a Rizzini, but they're still a thousand pounds. So a thousand pounds for a gun, most people who are entering the market and have a thousand pounds to spend are probably gonna buy a 12 bore. Cartridge price is less and so on and so on and so forth. The other real issue nowadays is the lack of modern sporting arms producing 16 ball. Browning and Rizzini are probably the only two companies that do it as such. Obviously the real advantage in 16 ball is being a member of the 16 ball club. Being a member of the club means that you get to tell everybody about how amazing a 16 ball is at every possible opportunity. It's just nice to have something different. The fact that everyone has a 12 and has a 20 now, maybe it's nice to just slide on into the middle. Certainly if you're going down the old English gun route, a 16 ball generally will hold less value than a 12. So actually it's pretty nice. So to sum up, point one, 16 bores are not that popular anymore, but that's for no reason other than the lack of availability of guns and ammunition. 
Point number two, never argue that a 16 ball isn't very good to a 16 ball owner. You'll literally be there for hours. And point three, go and shoot one, form your own opinion. I generally have found that they just kick a huge amount unless you're into the exceptional quality range, in which case, is that a wines investment? I suppose it's very much up to you whether you'd want to invest your own money in a 16. They generally do look a lot better than a 12 board. Just that small scaling of them really, really helps without being too dainty. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Take care and we'll see you next time. Hi guys, welcome to the gun shop.